My family loves macaroni and cheese, and a while ago, I looked for a recipe to make homemade macaroni and cheese, and found a lot of them to be really complicated, listing so many cheeses and so many ingredients, and I thought to myself, there must be an easier way to do this. So, I found a recipe and sort of experimented, and then finally found a foolproof way to make an easy homemade macaroni and cheese. A lot of times when people think about making macaroni and cheese, they make the big casserole, which is great. This feeds an entire family and it's a great side dish. You can bring it to parties and it's always a hit. You can also take this out of the casserole pan once you've baked it, put it in a crock pot and keep it on, keep warm. People can help themselves to it. However, I like to do a lot of entertaining and I decided macaroni and cheese is such a hit but a lot of times people like to have individual servings of things or I actually just like to serve individual things in um, adorable containers because it dresses up the table. So you take something kind of simple but delicious and uh, dress it up for your party. So I've already assembled this big macaroni and cheese but I am going to show you how easy it is to make the recipe and create these mini mac and cheeses and then bake them up. And then we'll show you how to make it even more special for your party. The first ingredient is, or actually the first step, is to spray down your container, whatever you're going to bake the mac and cheese in, with just some cooking spray. And I use coconut oil spray. So then we've got a container that's coated so your mac and cheese is not gonna stick to it. And then it's pre-boiling the elbow mac and putting a thin layer in the container. So this is a layered mac and cheese. So you're not going to want to put too much pasta in the bottom at first. Just covering the bottom. Just like that. Then the next step is, and this was sort of something that wasn't intuitive to me, but is you're going to sprinkle just a little bit of flour on top of this first layer of noodles. Just like that. Then is the butter that comes next. So you basically want to take hard butter and I used butter from the fridge and then cut it into parts and then stuck it in the freezer for a while. So it would be nice and firm when I put it into my casserole pan. Then of course, it wouldn't be macaroni and cheese without cheese. So I just got a mix here of mozzarella and cheddar. You can use a spicy, like a pepper jack, you can use whatever you want. But I just like to make up this mix right here. And of course I buy it pre-shredded because that's how I roll, I like to make things easy. So I'm just going to, as I typically do with cooking, put some cheese in here, but a lot of cheese. I like to have a lot of cheese in there. So then I've created my base layer. And then what comes next is more butter. <laughs> and more pasta to create our top layer. Just like that. And more cheese. So we're gonna layer that on the top. And then finally, we are going to put a little bit more, wait for it, butter. And then we are going to pour, whoops, we are gonna pour some breadcrumbs on the top to create a nice uh, topping. So I've added my final layer of pasta and butter and cheese. And now what I'm going to do is add milk but I actually flavor the milk with a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. So when you're making a nine by 13 container of this macaroni and cheese, it would be one cup milk and it's whole milk and then one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Since I'm making small containers, I'm going to divvy up the milk across all of the four mini containers. But right now I'm just gonna pour in this Worcestershire sauce. I'm not gonna measure it. It's, I've made this so many times, it's just kind of and about for me, so that was about a teaspoon right there. You don't wanna see the milk coming to the top of the container, you want, it, it's just a layer, it's going to help moisturize the macaroni and cheese as it bakes and make it nice and soft. So you pour a little bit of the milk in. Final step is we are going to put some more butter on top and add our breadcrumbs. So I've added some butter here 
And then I'm just gonna sprinkle. When you make a nine by 13 pan of macaroni and cheese, you bake it at 350 covered for 40 minutes or until bubbly. A lot of times I like to take the cover off at the very end, turn up the temp for like five more minutes and let it get nice and crusty on the top. These little guys are not gonna take 40 minutes. Probably I'm gonna check them after right around 30. All right, now I'm gonna cover it up. And when I use big containers, of course, they typically have a lid. So when I do put the foil on something small like this, I pinch it at the sides and ends, but I like to leave a little bit of space so all of my topping doesn't come off then when I take the foil off. All right, so easy peasy. I'm gonna finish making my final three. We're gonna stick these guys in the oven and I'm gonna show you something fun to do with these little mini mac and cheeses. I just have taken the mini mac and cheeses out of the oven. It took right around 30 minutes and then I took the covers off and spiked the temp to like 450 to give us a nice crusty top because the crusty edges and top are the best part of the macaroni and cheese. So now what I'm going to do, if I were having people over for dinner, I probably would have made four, six, eight, and I do happen to have all matching dishes, but like ramekins work great for this and all kinds of different dishes. So they don't need to match, that actually adds charm to your table. So you can make a whole bunch of mini mac and cheeses. And then what's fun is you can either have a mac and cheese bar or just put toppings on your table. So everybody's little portion can then be customized to what they want. We have some salsa here and that makes a nice addition. This is a spicy salsa, but oftentimes I'll get like a mango salsa. So anything goes. And then we've got some bacon pieces, which is always critical. Bacon makes everything better, honestly. And then I'm gonna move this back over here. Um, I chopped up some scallions and I didn't brown these, but you can sort of saute these and make them a little warmer and just sort of crunchier. And then my kids have to put Cholula sauce on everything. So anytime we have any kind of bar or any kind of make your own, we have to have this thing. You could also use diced ham, uh, chicken, any kind of other flavorings that appeal to your family. It is time to eat. The mac and cheese is ready.